Good morning. Blessing to be able to come to you again and on this Sunday. And those of you out there, uh, Facebook Live and, and some are on Zoom with us and some on conference call. Those out there on Zoom and conference call, if you can mute your phones or your so your voices can't be heard, it would be a blessing to everybody. Today we want to share with you and the series that we want to move into uh, called Helps for Trying Times. And uh, we were grateful for Greater Hope Baptist Church here in the city of Buffalo. And I thank the Lord for the near 40 years that I've been in, 41 years, I've been in full-time ministry. God has been in the blessing business ever since I entered the ministry, and I'm grateful for it. I want to call your attention today to the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, if you will, and beginning there at verse 4, Philippians chapter 4, and verse 4. And the Apostle Paul is writing this letter. It's an epistle. It's a letter. It's a book. to the Philippians. And four and four, Philippians 4 and 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6. Be careful for nothing. But in everything. by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, through Christ Jesus, helps for trying times. And uh, might say, what do you have when you have Jesus? The Apostle Paul writes this letter to be able to comfort the Philippians. The Philippians, the church at Philippi was dear to Paul. It was the church that started out of his vision that he received. The Bible said that in Acts chapter 16, that Paul wanted to preach the word in Asia, but was forbidden by the Holy Spirit. And then he wanted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered him not. And so he hears a voice, the vision. A man of Macedonia said, Come over into Macedonia and help us. And and Luke writes that they went. They went over into Macedonia. And there they found some women down by the river in prayer. And the Lord moved upon Lydia and opened her heart, and she opened her house to Paul and his traveling team. Lydia was a rich woman, a seller of purple, and she welcomed Paul into her house. She said, if you count me worthy, 
and Paul went there. And then Paul and Silas and others, as they moved about, and there was a woman, a young, a young maiden, who was of, uh, used by Satan. And then Paul rebuked the spirit out of her. And those who, 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 had, who had owned her, they had lost a lot of money because of that. And Paul and Silas were put in jail. But at midnight, the Philippian jailer, when he woke up from the earthquake, he was going to take his life. Paul said, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. And, I, and Paul, he said, what must I do to be saved? Paul said, believe on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house also. Believe on Jesus. That's the doorway into being able to have help for trying times. Is to believe in Jesus, to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Romans 4, Romans 5 says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 10 says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Salvation is available for you today. It's available. All you have to do is just call on the name of Jesus. They said, how should they call upon him in whom they have not believed? How can they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? Somebody has to spread the word. The word has been spread near and far. That one Friday on a hill called Calvary, Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. And because he died, he rose with all power that Sunday morning in his hand. And then he told some men to go and spread the good word. Told women, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. And the church was underway. I want you to know that the church is still operating today. Upon this rock, Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell should not prevail against it. And that's what turned my life around, those words that Jesus was building his church and the gates of hell should not prevail against it. That's what made the change into my life and it make a change in your life. I made a commitment to the church. And then the next verse said, I give the keys, the kingdom, to the pastor. And I made up my mind on that night. My pastor didn't know it, but I made a commitment to my pastor. I became a yes man. He didn't know it. He didn't know it, but I found out that if you bless the man of God, God will bless you. And so now Paul writes to this church. There's a lot of struggles going on, struggles within the church and struggles without. And we find ourselves there today. We find ourselves with struggles within and struggles without. We're in a trying time right now, a troubling time. We, 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 right now, we, we are confronted with some things that we haven't been confronted with in this form in our, our entire lifetime. Oh, we, we've, had, we've had pandemics before, but not at, not at this level. We've had protests before, but not at this level. Things are going on all around us, and if you're not careful, you'll end up being disturbed and troubled and tried during these trying times. And I just want to share with you some helps, helps for trying times. And today, today, I want to share with you from the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And I want you to realize what you have when you have Jesus. Paul, Paul wrote to the church at Rome. In the church at Rome, as he said over in chapter 5, he said, we have peace with God. In Romans chapter 5, beginning there at verse 1, Paul talks about peace with God, that we have peace with God because of our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
What do you have when you have Jesus? You got peace with God. You got peace with God. That means you and God are on talking terms. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5 and 1, we have peace with God. You need to be thankful today that you got peace with God. Even with all the things that are going on in this world in which we live in, the protests, the pandemic, this COVID-19 and cancer and a long list of things that are going on in our world, you need to make sure that you have peace with God, that you and God are all right. Oh, Jesus said we have peace with God. Jesus said because we can say our Father. We have, we have peace with God. What a blessing it is to be at peace with God. The Bible said it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of the God. Our God is alive. He's living. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's everywhere present. And the Bible says that we have peace with God because of Jesus Christ. I know, I know, I know the Bible says all of sin comes short of the glory of God, but because of Jesus, you with God. Peace with God. Peace with God. Peace with God. Peace with God. What do you have when you have Jesus? I heard Evie Hill talk about it at Moody years ago. What do you have when you have Jesus? You have peace with God. You and God are on talking terms. Oh Lord have mercy. That ought to help you in the midst of trying times. In the midst of all this difficulty. I, I got my mask and, and, and I got my sanitizer. All of that, but I got Jesus. I got peace with God. I got peace with God. Peace with God. Peace with God. I got peace with God. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and 4, the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. That regardless of what's going on, the Christian must rejoice. We must rejoice in the Lord. The Bible talks about entering this court with thanksgiving. In his court with praise. We, we, we need to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It's important for us to make sure that we rejoice in the Lord. We can't control what's going on around us. But you can control about how you respond to it. Don't let it get you down. 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 It's tough. It's tough out here. Don't let it get you down. Oh, Lord, have mercy. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But you got to be on guard. And guard yourself. Guard your mind. Guard your heart. And the Bible said, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. What a word. What a word for us. What a word for us to rejoice. I preached to you some weeks ago about weeping and doing for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. And once that joy comes as God's children, we need to rejoice in the Lord. And that always. And again, I say rejoice. And then Paul says in verse 5, he says, let your moderation be known unto all men, for the Lord is at hand. The Lord is at hand. And, and, and sometimes we lose sight of the fact that the Lord is coming back again. We lose sight of the fact that, 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 that the Lord is coming back. He's promised. He promised. He said, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Let your moderation be known unto all men. We are moderate. We are moderate. We're not, so, we're not caught up in all this stuff. We're not caught up in all this stuff. Oh, a beautiful home is nice. A nice car is nice. Nice clothes are nice. All these things are nice. But moderation, why? For the Lord is at hand. At any moment, the Lord can show up. The table is set. The Jews are back in their native land. The prophecies are falling in order. And the next, the next step 
Many say of the rapture of the church. The Lord is at hand. Moderation. 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 Don't get overboard. Be moderate. The Lord is at hand. And then he says, be careful for nothing. And that's where we want to be park at. Be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything. Don't let any, don't, don't, don't become anxious. Don't let anxiety get the best of you. Talk about people having anxiety attacks. They think about this, 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 this virus. Yes, this virus is real. Yes, it's real. Yes, it's real. Yes, it's real. But we, but we have help from the Lord. If God said, if, he, if God be for you, he's more than the world against you. Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Job said, the Lord is in control. The Lord is in control. And we need to understand that. Yes, the virus is out there, but the Lord is in control. The Bible says that he won't put no more on us than we're able to bear. And I'll be preaching on some of those things as we go forward with helps for trying times. Help for trying time. Help for trying time. Be careful for nothing. Be careful for a word from the man of God, a word from the Bible, God's word for God's people. Be careful for nothing. Don't, don't let this get the best of you. Oh, Lord have mercy. Don't let this rob you of your joy. Sometimes you got to turn the television off. Sometimes you can't handle all these reports. 45,000 people infected. And it, 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 yes, and, and, and we know it. We were warned the danger of this virus. And we need to understand that those of us who belong to the Lord need to be careful for nothing. God is in control. And we got we got we got we got we got to trust the Lord. We got to be careful for nothing. Be be careful for nothing. Don't worry about anything. But in everything by prayer. Be careful for nothing but in everything. In everything. Oh Lord have mercy. Oh Lord have mercy. The, the reports are heavy. And many of us have lost loved ones and or friends that we knew that this virus has taken out. The virus is real. The virus is real, but you you can't you can't you can't live life worried about it. You 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 destroy your very being worried about it. Oh Lord have mercy. Wash your hands, wear your mask. Try to do as you, as you ought to do. The Bible says, be careful for nothing. Don't worry, worry about anything, but in everything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. But in everything, pray about it. Pray about it. Pray about it. You sing a song. They Pray about it. That's, that's one of the, that's one of the, the shortness, the lackings that we have today by not being together. Some of the songs of Zion. Maybe you got, maybe you got some music in your house. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Or maybe on your phone or something. But pray about it. Pray about it. But in everything, through prayer, everything by prayer. The hymn writer said, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. Sometimes, sometimes we be, we, we're too choice about what we want to take to the Lord. Well, I don't want to pray about it. No, no, everything, everything. How do you handle everything? By, by doing prayer in everything. In everything, stop operating about, oh, I'm going to do this, but I'm not going to tell God about this. Tell God about everything. Jesus said, when you pray, say, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. That means I got to talk to the Lord every day. I got to ask him every day for daily bread. 
I can't happen. They told us to worry about the meat, to worry about uh, pork going up, chicken going up, milk going up. But one thing had not, one thing, one thing had not been put out of our reach. That's to be able to pray. That's prayer, to be able to pray, to talk about it. Look what he tells us, prayer and supplication. That means asking God. So many, so many people got so many prayers, so many prayers they pray and don't ask God. Or ask God for everybody else and don't ask for themselves. Shame on you. If you've gotten to the place where you don't have to ask God for you, you want him to bless your brother, bless your sister, bless your mama, bless this, bless that. Bless. What about blessing you? Lord, bless me. I can hear Sister Glover saying, Claire Glover, she's going on to be with the Lord. Even me, Lord. Even me, Lord. Even me, Lord. Let some drops fall on me. I can hear Brother Willa Parrot. I can hear Sister Parrot sing. I can hear it. Even me. I hear her saying, He whispers sweet peace. Even me. So the days of knowledge, there's a brighter day ahead. Oh, Lord, have mercy. God is in the blessing business. Supplication means to ask God. Ain't nothing wrong with asking God. I ask him every day. I ask him every day. What do I ask him? I ask that his kingdom would come. I ask that his will would be done. I ask that he would give me daily bread. I ask that he would forgive me. I ask that he would lead me not into testing, but ask that he would deliver me from evil. Ask God with supplication, with supplication. Oh, Lord, I'm mercy. Shame on you, you won't ask God. Lord, I'm nervous. Lord, protect me from this virus. Oh, Lord, I'm mercy. Lord, I, I, I got to go out. I'm going out. Protect me from this virus. Let your request be made known unto God. And don't be silly. God done, done told you. They done told you. He, he, he told man to subdue the earth. He told man to subdue the earth. And man said, listen, this is what you do. You put this mask on. Keep your germ from going out. And I got to keep other people's germ from coming on me. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But I'm not going to leave, leave out talking to God. I'm talking to God. I, 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 I got the faith. No, faith operates when you're in, in the midst of difficulty. Come on, I ain't going to wear no mask. That, that might not be faith. That might be just foolishness. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Say to Jesus, cast yourself down. Jesus said, Jesus said, no, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. I know what he said. I know, I know that he said he will take care of me, and I believe that he will. But I'm not, I'm not going, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Oh Lord have mercy. God is in the blessing business. With thanksgiving. Listen. You got to thank God for what's going on right now. You got to learn to thank God for what he's doing right now. Thank you for, I feel pleased to say, thank you for waking me up this morning. Thank you for starting me on my way. Thank you that my, my sheep wasn't my winding sheep. And my, 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 my bed wasn't my cooling board. And that the blood still run warm in my veins. The activity in my lips. I just want to thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes the church would just ring out with just thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You'll feel better when you you feel better when you take a look at what God has done for you. The Bible says, the Bible says, be careful for nothing. But by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Tell God about it. Some of y'all are spending too much time arguing with people. 
You don't don't argue with your children. You don't you don't argue with your husband and your wife. You don't you don't argue. You don't you, you don't do that. You don't do that. Let your request be made known. My wife won't act right. Tell God about it. My husband won't act right. Tell God about it. My children won't act right. Tell God about it. Let your request be made known unto God. God, you work it out. I'm gonna hold my peace. I'm gonna be still. I'm gonna turn the other cheek. I'm gonna go the extra mile. I'm gonna deal with this situation, God. I'm gonna put it in your hands. You work it out. He will. He's still a doctor in a sick room. He's still a lawyer in the courtroom. He's still a heart fixer and a mind regulator. And the Bible says that when you do it, he says in verse 8, and the peace of God, and the peace of God, and the peace of God. What do you have when you have Jesus? You have peace with God. And then you have the peace of God, which passes, the Bible says, all understanding. So keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. God is in the blessing business. And I encourage you today to make up in your mind that you're going to do what thus said the Lord. You're going to let the Lord have his way in your life. Let him have his way. Let him work it out. You, you, ain't, you ain't got no control over none of this. Not at all. The virus is invisible. It can, cannot be seen. Oh, Lord have mercy. We might see the particles that might come from somebody who has it, but we have no way of knowing it. People pull up one behind another, get testing, and some find out that they're positive the next day. Nobody knew it. Didn't know it. That's the way it is. It's all around us. So is everything. Cancer is all around us. All this is all around us. It's always been around us. We don't need, it's always been around us. But what has been around us most has been is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And so the Bible says, the Bible says, be careful for nothing. The Bible says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Go on and be happy. Go on and be happy. Oh, Lord, I talked to one of my preacher friends the other day. said he made himself a big pot of black eyed peas. He said it was so good. We were talking about how, how some things satisfy. Oh, you could go get a steak and order a steak in. But sometimes just some black eyed peas, some cornbread. You don't hear me. Some Kool Aid. Sweet water. Lord, that mercy can make a difference in your life. Go and make yourself be happy. And every time you have a problem, situation, take it to the Lord in prayer. I can hear Alzira Lee saying, I get great consolation every time I pray. Oh, he's a blessing today. I know you know I know you know it. I know you know. You tried him. This ain't the first time you've been up against it. You've been up against it before in life. And he's brought you through. And the same one that gave you the victory before, he will give it to you again. Because he's still in the blessing business. All you got to do is believe. What must I believe? Believe that he lived. Believe that he died. Believe that early Sunday morning he got it with all power in his head. Believe that he's coming back again. Believe that he got me in his control. And because I believe, I know I got peace with God. And because I got peace with God, I'm going to rejoice every morning. Because I got peace with God, I'm going to let my moderation be known unto all men. For the Lord might have we stacking up stuff. Stop stacking up stuff. He's on his way back. Oh, Lord, have mercy. And then don't you worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer, supplication, thanksgiving, that your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God will keep your hearts. Listen, if you want to be a part, we think grateful for the opportunity to talk to you today. If you don't have a church home, I want you to know at Greater Hope there's a place for you. You can, you can uh, research us on online or Greater Hope Facebook page or Greater Hope website. You can research us at 8 Verplank Street, Buffalo, New York. Just say, I want to be a member of the church. Or just text it and send something. Somebody pick it up. And, and I want you to know at Greater Hope there's a place for you. If you'd like to give, you can give, give the five. The Greater Hope, give the five, Greater Hope. Go out on give the five, put Greater Hope Buffalo on it. You'll see a picture of my wife and I there with the church. You know you have the right one. You can give that way to give the five. 
You can give to Greater Hope through Cash App. Dollar sign Greater Hope Buffalo. You can do that. If you want to be a blessing to me, you can do it any way you want to. At, uh, my name, J. Clyde 71. Cash App, dollar sign J. Clyde 71. U.S. Mail, you can send to the church. You can stop by. I've been here every day. Between hours 11 and 12, God is in the blessing business. What do you have when you have Jesus? You have the ability. You have help for trying times because you got peace with God. And then you got the peace of God, which passes all understanding. God bless you. God keep you.